Since I made my original video about setting up your Etsy shipping profiles for print on demand, there have been some great questions and I've learned some new things as well, so I thought it would be a good time to revisit your Etsy shipping profiles. All right, so let's dive into some more information about your Etsy shipping profiles for your print on demand business. So like I mentioned there in the intro, I thought this would be a good opportunity to revisit and just expand upon some information and actually in one case, correct some information that I gave in the past. I thought it would be good to just sort of combine some more information about shipping profiles and cover it in a new video. And before we dive into this, if you haven't seen my original video all about setting up your Etsy shipping profiles, I actually did a whole three part shipping series. And the first two were about your general shipping strategy, as well as my shipping profile overview video. So if you haven't seen any of those, I do recommend you check them out. They lay a good foundation. And I will reference a couple things uh, that I covered in the past in this video as we're digging into some more info. So the first thing I want to talk about is something I've gotten questions about a few times in the last few months that I did not point out in my original video about setting up your shipping profiles. And actually, this is a two-part question. The first part of the question is, what is the difference between creating your own shipping profile from scratch and using one from your print-on-demand platform, whether that's Printify, Printful, Gelato, what have you? And the second part of that question is, what do I do with the information about weight and size? And I think that question comes up when somebody has created their own shipping profile from scratch. So I'll tackle those as two separate questions, but they, they tended to come in together. So the first question about What's the difference between creating your own shipping profile or using one from your from your platform? The difference is technically nothing, but depending on what you plan to do with the shipping profile, one just might be easier than the other. Now, the thing to be aware of, depending on which platform you use, is when you publish a listing and use one of the default or assign one of the default shipping profiles from your platform, it, of course, is going to include all the information that the platform provides, and that can be a time saver. However, if you use Printify, Printify has a lot of different print providers, and each one can have slight differences in their cost of shipping, the origin country, the origin postal code. And whenever Printify has the specific information for that provider, that's what they'll publish in that shipping profile if you choose to publish a new shipping profile when you publish the listing. If that all didn't make sense, let me show you what I'm talking about here. So I just copied a listing that's already published here, a, a simple t-shirt from print provider Monster Digital. If we open that one and we go through the details as if we were going to publish it at the very bottom, the very, very bottom, there is a shipping profile option here. And by default, the option to create a new shipping profile is checked off. And when we do that, if we publish this listing, then when we go look at it, it's going to have created a brand new shipping profile in our Etsy account. And here it is. So I publish that listing and it comes through with the title of the product in the name of the shipping profile. When you do that from Printify, if we click on edit, we'll see the details here. So it came through with the name of our product as the profile name, the US as the country of origin. It gave us an origin zip code, a processing time, and it automatically pops populated uh, the delivery time frames as well as the pricing for all of the different countries that are available. This is based on the information from Monster Digital specifically. One of the reasons why I don't like to do this is because if you create a brand new shipping profile every time you publish a product, you will have lots, you'll have hundreds of different shipping profiles, and that can be a lot to manage because if you need to change your shipping prices, it means you have to go in and update all of those shipping profiles. So that is why when I publish a product, I prefer to uncheck this box to create a new shipping profile and I find the existing shipping profile that I want to use and I just give it a name that I know I'll recognize so mine is called t-shirts and the production time is two to five business days so that's the one I use for all my t-shirts now to create the one that you want to use for all of your t-shirts or all of your mugs or whatever you know, product category you're creating, you can still publish one listing using the Printify shipping profile and then just go ahead and edit it. Or you can create one from scratch from your shipping profiles page in your Etsy account. You get there by going to your shop dashboard on the left menu, go to settings and then select the option for shipping settings. And the first page it drops you on is your shipping profiles. There's three additional tabs on this page. So if we published that listing with a new shipping profile like we did, we could simply click on the edit button here and I could rename it so that I know this is going to be my t-shirts profile. And you can change the origin zip code if you need to, if you are gonna start using a different you know, uh, print provider, 
you can also leave it. Let's say Monster Digital was gonna be the one that I'm planning on using as my primary uh, print provider, so I would leave that. Don't need to touch the uh, processing time unless you know it's different than what it came through with. Then all you need to do is adjust your pricing and the countries that you offer it in. And you wanna be intentional here because this is how in your shipping profiles on Etsy, as I explained in my original shipping series videos, this is how you control where your products are visible to customers. And if I was doing free shipping for the US, I would come back up to the United States and I would change this from fixed price to free shipping. And now I am charging free shipping in the US and I'm charging a shipping price in the other countries based on Monster Digital's actual cost. All right, that was probably lengthier than I wanted it to be, but that, that is how you would make edits or adjust a shipping profile that you published from Printify to be a multi-purpose shipping profile that you can use for all the products in a particular category. And if any of that didn't make sense to you, if you want more detail, then definitely check out my original shipping profile videos for shipping strategy and setting up your shipping profiles because I go through every single detail of setting those up and a lot of the things I talked about there in more detail. All right, so the other option of creating a profile from scratch for that same purpose would be to just come to this page and click on create profile. And if you create a shipping profile like this and forget to change one thing, then this is where the product weight and dimensions will come into play because on your individual Etsy listings, you will have to enter a product weight and the dimensions if you don't change one of the settings in your shipping profile here. And that is the very first option here in the shipping profile. For shipping prices, the default option when you create a new profile is calculate them for me. And it says recommended, but that's really only recommended if you are yourself shipping your products and you want Etsy to calculate a shipping price based on the destination. And that's helpful if you are buying your own shipping labels for either from Etsy or from a third party service. And it's based on the weight of the package and where it's going. However, we are not shipping our physical products. If you are a print on demand seller, then we are also drop shipping, meaning our print on demand provider is going to ship the product directly to the customer for you. And we know that the shipping charge that we pay is a flat cost for all products. And it does change by destination, but there's no difference depending on the destination within one country. So in order to avoid having to enter the weight and dimensions of each individual listing when you create them, what you want to do is change this to I'll enter fixed prices manually. That just means you're gonna charge the same shipping cost to all customers within each country. And that matches up with what our print on demand platform is going to charge us because we get charged a flat shipping cost for each country as well. Now you can go about completing the rest of the shipping profile, starting with the country of origin, the origin zip code, the processing time, and then adding your destinations, the shipping methods, and your pricing. So you're basically just adding those manually instead of just adjusting them like we did a moment ago. But otherwise, there is really no advantage to creating one from scratch versus just editing one from your print on demand platform. You can get to what you need either way. All right, the last thing I wanna cover in this video is correcting something that I said in a comment or replying to a comment on a video, as well as, I believe I mentioned it in a podcast, talking about offering products in different countries. So this, this question or this correction of my answer applies to international selling when you have products that you wanna to target towards a specific country. So the question that I've gotten multiple times in the past few months is, if you want to sell a product in more than one country, and it's not necessarily everywhere, let's say that I wanna sell a t-shirt in the United States, and I also wanna sell that t-shirt in the UK, but I want to give my product in the UK the best possible chance of making sales. Actually, in both countries, I wanna give that product the best possible chance of making sales and not discourage customers from buying. So how does my shipping profile impact the chance of making a sale? Well, it's all in the country of origin because when you have a shipping profile that you use for all products in one category, let's go back to my t-shirt shipping profile here. This is the shipping profile that I, by default, I just assign this shipping profile to every new t-shirt listing that I create. And the country of origin on this is the United States because I use Monster Digital to publish all of my Printify t-shirt listings to my Etsy shop. So it is being printed in the United States by Monster Digital. And I do free shipping in the United States, so I just add the $4 shipping charge into the price of my products. However, I also have the UK 
as a shipping destination in the shipping profile, and I have other as the shipping service and the delivery time as three to seven business days, and the price is $8.99. How could it possibly be a delivery time of three to seven business days if it's shipping from the United States? Well, the reality is that when I get an order from a customer who's located in the United Kingdom, I don't have the order fulfilled by Monster Digital. I grab that order before it goes to production, and I change the print provider to one who is located in the United Kingdom. However, even though it shows this estimated delivery time in the Etsy listings for a customer who is viewing my product from the United Kingdom, it still looks to them like it is coming from the United States because the country of origin is the US in the shipping profile. So that means the customer may not fully trust what Etsy is showing them for that estimated delivery time because they'll see it's coming from the United States and they'll sort of already know there's no way I'm gonna get that in three to seven business days if it's coming from the US. And that can discourage some customers in the UK from buying my product because they just inherently know that if something's coming from outside of the UK, it's going to take longer to arrive. So what can we do about this? Well, this is the question that I've addressed in the podcast and in some replies to comments on previous videos, because one option, I'm not saying this is the, a perfect solution, but one option you have is to duplicate that listing, basically list that item again, but from a print provider that is in that other country. And that way you can have a shipping profile assigned to it that shows the UK or whatever the country is as the origin country. And that would give that product the best possible chance of making sales in the UK because it will not look like it's coming from the United States. So the way that you would do that is you would start in Printify and you would copy your original listing. So the original one from Monster Digital or whoever your provider is in the US or your domestic country you would locate that listing and then use the copy or duplicate button here click on that, it'll drop a copy right above it. And then you will use the three dot menu and use the replace option. So you're gonna keep all of the product details the same, but you're just gonna replace it with a different print provider. So we select replace, and now I'm gonna locate a print provider in the UK that I want to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the select and continue button to switch the print provider to print clever. Now it gives us the option to make any edits that we need to make. So make sure that the sizing and the positioning is uh, accurate to the way it's supposed to be. Make sure we've selected the color options that we want, our white and our blue option, and we'll click on save product here. And now we can come down and we can edit our title. And for this video, to keep it easy, I'm gonna put UK in the title, um, but of course you're not gonna wanna do that. You're gonna wanna do the whole title and description and tags and all of that, do the same process uh, that you would have done on the original listing. And it's okay if it has the same title as the original listing because it is going to be a separate listing. Make sure that you adjust your prices to be accurate based on the pricing of this different print provider before you publish it. So if this pricing was significantly different for Monster Digital, I'd wanna do a quick analysis and make sure I've got the right profit margins. And when we get down to the shipping profile section here, if this is the first time you're doing this, you can use the create new shipping profile option because we're gonna, we need to get a second shipping profile with the origin country of the UK. And if you haven't created one yet, then this will make it a little bit easier because it'll pull through the origin postal code and everything for you. So you can use this option to create a new one this time, unless you already have done this before, in which case you would want to uncheck this and then locate the shipping profile that you use for your UK t-shirts. But I'm gonna go ahead and check the option to create a new one, so we will publish that one. And once that listing has published, if we come to our shipping profiles page or actually right in that listing where the shipping profile is listed, you can edit it from there as well. Uh, but on the shipping profiles page, we can locate, again, it's gonna be by product title. So the UK Be Cool shirt, that's the one that just got created. And if we click on edit for that one, we'll now see this one has the country of origin listed as the UK. It's got our origin postal code based on our print provider in the UK. And we can change the name of this one to UK t-shirts because now I'm gonna use this profile for all my UK t-shirts. Now, here's the important part. If this one is going to be targeted towards customers in the UK, and I only want this listing to really be visible to customers in the UK, then I need to delete every other country that's listed here except, of course, for the UK. So just click on your trash can icons here until you get rid of every other country except for the UK. Now, of course, if there are other countries listed here that you do want to use this print provider for, like if, if you were gonna use this print provider for customers in 
Ireland, let's say, then you can leave Ireland in here. The point is just that you want the shipping profile to be focused on the customers you're targeting, just like the one for the US. All right, so now I've got this down to just the UK and the price information is gonna be the same as if you were making this listing for your primary market in the US. Basically, you either want to change it to free shipping and then build this cost into the price of the product or you want to uh, set the price based on what your strategy is. So if your strategy is to just charge the full shipping cost, you can leave it at $7.59. While answering the questions about how to do this, how to have a separate duplicate listing targeting one specific country, I mistakenly said that you have to have a domestic shipping location and shipping method based on your location as the seller. That was incorrect. You only need to have a domestic shipping method in your shipping profile based on the country of origin. And that can be different than your domestic country as the seller. That's exactly what we have here. I have the UK as the country of origin for this product, for this shipping profile. So now the result is that when I assign this shipping profile to that, that duplicate listing, it's only going to be viewable to customers who are located in the UK. Actually, even that's not 100% accurate. The customers who will be able to view this product are customers who have a shipping destination of the UK. What do I mean by shipping destination? Well, it depends on a couple things. If you're a customer searching on Etsy, I searched for Christmas sweater. If I don't touch any of these search filters, Etsy is gonna show me results based on my location. So they're going to favor showing me search results for products that ship from the United States because that is my destination according to what they know. However, there is a way around that. If I come up here to the all filters little button here, I can pop out this side menu. And at the very bottom of that list of options for filters, I have an option for ship to, and it's currently set to ship to the United States, but I have the choice to manually change that. If I change that to the United Kingdom and I hit apply, it's gonna change change my search results, now it's going to show me products that have a destination in the shipping profile of the United Kingdom. And they may even favor products that ship from the United Kingdom in the search rankings as well. So that's the full explanation of that. That is how you control which customers can see your products and search results by adding or removing country destinations in your shipping profiles. So is it worth duplicating your listings just so that there is a reasonable shipping option visible to customers in a specific country? I think it could be worth it if you have a design that you know is gonna sell better in one country versus another. Like let's say you had a funny design that had something to do with the UK that maybe will resonate more with with customers in the UK, that would be maybe a good use of a shipping profile like that. But that's just one quick example. That entire question is really a topic for another video. I just wanted to show the method of how to do that with your shipping profiles. And that's it for this video. I hope this additional detail on shipping profiles was helpful. If you found it helpful, do me a favor and hit that like button so that YouTube can show it to more people. Don't forget to go back and watch my original shipping series videos if you haven't already and subscribe to the POD Insights channel so you can be notified when I come out with future videos. Thanks everybody. See you next time.